What's up guys, Axis here with my first Redshift tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how to create this subsurface river and this landscape aerial shot inside Redshift. Going to be using a landscape from Landscape Essentials, of course, the best collection of images on the internet, which you can check out in the top right hand corner or the first link in the description. It contains 50 landscapes, each landscape containing a texture map, normal map and a height map and also previews now we've got previews so each one already has a preview uh, you're seeing some results on screen and uh, yeah I'm gonna be using this in this tutorial so in this composition let's just go and grab a plain standard stuff here let's go and create a redshift material as well you can create a shortcut to do it as well which is a lot more convenient so just go and drag our new material onto our plane zoom into our plane so we see what's going on I'll zoom into my shader graph so it's easier to see if you're on a smaller screen. And let's go and grab all our files, drag these in. First off, let's go and put our displacement in and run down how to use the displacements in here. Drag our displacement in, drag our height map in to our displacement, texture, texture map and output this to our displacement and nothing's happening and that's because you need the redshift tag onto your plane. Before I do that I'm going to scale all these objects up very slightly, I'll scale them up by 0 0.2, 0 0.02 sorry and then I do on the offset I do 0 0.02, 0 0.02 to recenter it Basically this just fixes any clipping issues. You can also just mirror U and V and it fixes that as well. But since I've come from Octane we don't have mirroring so <laughs> gotta do it this way. And I'm gonna go and grab our redshift tag which is in redshift tags. Redshift object here. I'm gonna rename this to landscape just to keep things oh. just to keep things organized. We're going to override our geometry here. I'm going to have a couple of examples of the settings that you use and how they can affect what your displacement looks like. We're going to turn on our displacement here and enable our tessellation. Turn up maximum displacement and max displacement scale to 70. Specifically for this landscape, other ones you might have to turn up or turn down. I might even put it up a bit higher, maybe 80 by 80. And as you can see, you know, everything everything's looking good. These these settings are alright, but it's a bit slow. It takes a while to export. See, I moved the camera and it's taken a little while to export. So while we're working on it, even on the final result, I just turn these both down to 2. But on the maximum subdivisions, I turn it up to 8 sometimes on the final render. But for working, we're going to turn it to 4 or 3. Either works. You really don't need that high of a uh, subdivision for this. And we're going to be leaving the width segments and height segments on the plane on 20 because just, just visibly looking at it, it doesn't change. But we will, we will be coming back to this in the future just because I'm going to do a bit of texture mixing as well. So let's just go and start making our, our material now. So I'm going to drag my texture into the diffuse color and I'm going to drag our normal into a normal. Unfortunately, you have to create a normal map, which wouldn't be that much of a problem, but in the map you can't just drag a, a texture into here. See, you can't go and, and plug one in. You have to actually just copy the path in. So you can now delete this original normal map. Plug this into our bump. Turn this to like 0.5 or something. Don't need it to be too high. And then we are going to be doing some texture mixing so just go and grab a color layer into here we're going to be using the first layer only it's a very simple mix I'm doing here, I might do a more complicated one of it if anyone's interested but I'm going to be scaling this up a little bit so you can see what's going on drag our out color into our diffuse layer and oh, everything's gone so we're going to get a ramp now and the way we're going to be mixing this is by using our height map. So if we just plug the out color into our ramp 
and then plug this into our surface, you can see that the ramp is actually distributing using the UV texture. The way we change this is by changing the source to alternative. And there we go. This is just what it looks like standard. And if I drag this up, you can see we're selecting the top of our landscape. Which is pretty, uh, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty rad. All right, so now we select the top of our landscape and we're gonna be using this to mix. So the, the new texture will be on this white bit. You can actually even mix other textures that are inside Landscape Essentials or other textures that you have just on hand. But I'm gonna be just using our standard one and then plugging it into a color correction. Gonna be deleting all these nodes or ports just by right clicking and clicking delete port just to keep everything a bit more uh, uncluttered or organized. Don't think uncluttered is a word. So I'm going to put this into our input here. This is our original texture going into the input of a color correction. And then we're going to be plugging this into our layer color of layer one. And now, oh, we've already plugged it in. So we just plug the material into the surface once again. Nothing has changed yet. And that's because A, we haven't changed the color correction settings and B, we haven't plugged in our, our ramp into the mask. So now we've done that, we can go into our color correction and you need to resend this when this happens. But there we go. I'm going to make it slightly darker and slightly less saturated too. And as you can see, it's really harsh and that's just because these uh, ramp colors are really close to each other. I'm just going to bring these apart a little bit more. I still like it being a kind of harsh transition and the way I'm going to actually add a bit of detail from our height map into this transition is by grabbing a curvature map which is if you cut if you're coming from Octane it's the the dirt shader but if you're coming from Arnold it's the same thing it's curvature. So as you can see this is looking pretty pretty bad pretty bad pretty pixely and the reason that I said we were going to come back to these segments is because turn these up to 128 or, or lower and there we go we've got a lot more detail in there and I'm going to go into here and I'm going to actually turn up our radius a little bit more I really don't want these like harsh lines like I would on a, a piece of geometry I want these soft lines here I don't want it to be too overpowering and then we're going to go into the remap and then turn the bias up and I'm also going to turn down the input max as well it's not doing anything oh <laughs> there we go I want it to be really harsh because the mix the mix doesn't really work unless you have a really harsh contrast so I'm going to drag this in to uh, another layer color we're going to be multiplying it, so just delete these once again. We're actually going to delete the layer color one as well, only leaving the base color and layer one mask. So just drag this into layer one mask, drag a ramp into base color, and we're getting a bit cl cluttered here, so I'm going to drag this over here because we don't need this in our way. Drag this back, and I'm going to plug this into our mask. I'll plug the RS material into our output again just so we can see what's going on. And there we go. We've got a little bit of uh, variation in there. We can even turn this to multiply. Might not even make a difference, but that's what I did originally. I can't tell because, you know, I had to re resend it, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's making a difference. But what this is doing is the color of this is black, so it's just multiplying multiplying the curvature and the ramp together. So where the white is on the on the ramp, you know, the black is kind of cancelling out and that's where we're getting these nice little stratification lines uh, or erosion lines going through our landscape. So if we just mess around with the radius again, we can even get some, some different settings, some different results. But I really like that kind of, kind of like messy, just bleh. You know, it's just going everywhere. I think it looks kind of nice. So that's pretty much it for our landscape material. 
Now we're going to be focusing on some lights and then our river. So I'm going to be bringing in our point light or area light. As you can see, we've got roughness on here. So if we go on to, or no, we've got reflection. So if we go onto our material, just turn down the no, material, turn down the reflection to zero on the white. You can have this up if you want, but I, I think it doesn't look as nice in this case. I don't really want a wet looking landscape. I just want a nice diffuse only material. I'm gonna duplicate a light, just kind of have a simple, simple setup here with two rim lights. Drag this up and turn up the intensity to three. Uh, that's all right. It's maybe a bit dark. Might be my monitor though. Um, okay. Now we're going to be bringing in our river. So it's just another plane. Drag this up a little bit. Okay. And now we're going to be creating a redshift material. I didn't rename these materials, I'm a bit unorganized, but we can just call this water. And we can see the light reflecting in our material. We're going to be changing the material to a glass, or no, water, sorry. And all you can see now is a dispersion, because there's no roughness. Oh, please don't crash on me. Right, so all you can see is a reflection of the light and the dispersion. First, uh, first we need to get rid of the dispersion because we don't need it. I'm going to be turning the roughness up to one as well. So now we have this kind of like milky looking fluid here. Don't really want that. So in the subsurface, we're going to be turning up the amount to one. And now we've got some nice subsurface. It's really fast as well. I'm using bucket mode. So I'm progressive. It's a little bit slower. For subsurface and also if you're using uh I forgot what's called just subsurface like standard subsurface down here it just doesn't appear uh in the progressive render you're gonna want to use bucket for the final render but i sure i'm sure you guys know that already i'm sure you guys have watched some tutorials so i'll just ignore that and i'm going to be using our layer one as well dragging this up and then going into our color and turning this to a blue. And there we have this like kind of tropical, tropical blue color. I really like it. It's like a, a bluey green. And the way we control how much of this blue is seen is we can turn up the radius scale or turn down the radius scale. So there we have no radius. And if we zoom in, we can see it a little bit better, but that's super laggy. I'm going to turn down the, uh, the maximum subdivisions but you can see a tiny tiny bit of subsurface in here and I like to have the general radius on low and then the layer one radius higher so maybe change this to 40 or something you can even bring in more colors as you can see we've got more layers so you bring in more colors if you want Put this on 35. But yeah, that's looking good. And now we can bring in a camera. Standard redshift camera here. And I'm going to be just having this face down. So all we need is the Y position. And then we need the Y rotation to be minus 90. So it's looking down. And there we have it. Pretty much it. You can even add caustics as well to the to the uh, to the lights, which will make the the glow around the shoreline a lot bigger. But it's really heavy, and the result isn't really all that different from just turning up the scale of the lights. Just in this case, because caustics are more meant for you know like a a cup or something like that, you know, or a product visualization. I guess it doesn't really work that well for for rivers. But yeah, that is pretty much it. And if you want to, if you want to um, wrap this around, I forgot to mention, if you want to kind of make this tile, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do mirror UV, go into our normal map, advanced. Uh, where is it? Uh, wrap UV is already selected there. 
go into our height and you guessed it we're going to mirror uv again and then we can either change the projection to cubic or we can just scale this down to like 50 oh. or 50 that kind of looks cool when it's when it's not uniformly scaled there actually that's kind of cool but uh, oh i didn't change this to 50 but there we go it's mirrored so it'll look a little weird so you probably want to change the the position a little bit to you know like 50 by 50 or 25 25 And then we're going to turn up the, the length a little bit as well. Anyway, I'm just kind of messing around with this now. All right, so that should do it for today. If you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like and also subscribe to see more of this sort of content. And please put some suggestions and comments for, you know, future videos that I can do. That'd be really appreciated. And I hope you guys have a brilliant day. Check out Landscape Essentials and I'll see you in the next tutorial.